Hi, it's Jessica DeMasso with WTF Health, and joining me right now, I'm so pleased to have Molly Coy. She is an industry legend. She is. She she was working with the healthcare consumer before the term healthcare consumer was even conceptualized in somebody's brain. So you've been in healthcare, and specifically healthcare innovation, for several decades, which is really remarkable. And what are you doing now? Well, I'm actually, I'm doing a lot of different things. I'm executive in residence with Avia. So we work with 55 large health systems for tech selection adoption, implementation. Um, I'm on the board of Consejo Sano, which does patient engagement for the patients who speak different languages or from different cultures, and nobody's getting a hold of them now. I am on the board of Ginger, which is a rapidly growing company doing full-stack behavioral health services with texting and mobile coaching. And I just joined the board of Emeticis. I'm very excited. This is a publicly traded company that's one of the largest home care and hospice companies in the country. And so it's really out there in the community delivering the services. So now I'm going from purely digital to actually in the home. I love that. So. That's amazing. Usually people go the other way, Molly. Yeah. <laughs> Revolutionary yeah. even now. So I want to talk to you, though, about the fact that you really have been around for, like, for so many, for such a long time and have witnessed such changes in health technology. I mean, from the very beginning and then even to where we're at today. Do you think that this is finally it? I mean, I would love to hear your perspective. I mean, I think we're all wide-eyed and optimistic <laughs> right now. Like, this is amazing. Yeah. Digital health is having its yeah. moment. But are we or are we not? Digital health is definitely having its moment. It's more than just a moment. I think what we saw at JPM this year is real maturing of some of the companies. Some of them we started tracking in the mid-2000s. Other ones are maybe four or five years old. But there are a lot of companies that are maturing. So there's no question about okay. that. And the appetite from employers and from health plans for these solutions is very strong. It's still a welter of competing solutions and sometimes weak proof of the actual consequences. But I think we are well on our way. This is not going to turn around. OK. Which is important because I think that, it, it, from what I understand, there are previous kind of cycles where it's like things have moved really, really slowly. And it seems like the pace is quickening here. And it also seems, like you said, I think things are here to stay and that the healthcare incumbents are taking this maybe a little bit more seriously. Would you agree? Definitely. And I think there's two reasons. One is that the consumers have changed because mm -hmm. their experience with technology has, a, you remember the old movie about, you know, I've, I'm fed up, I won't take it any longer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the consumers are sort of saying, I am not going to take this any longer in healthcare. And so they're really applying a lot of pressure. And the other thing is that the technology is itself so much better, capable of so much more, easier to use. We were pretty wonky in yeah. the beginning, and we asked a lot of the consumer or the clinician, but today we've solved a lot of that. Where do you think that we still need to do some work in order to make this be, you know, as ubiquitous <laughs> as we really want it to be, in order yeah. to make the kinds of impacts that, that, you know, I mean, technology has changed every under, other industry around us, mm -hmm. but the way that it's changed healthcare, I mean, if you look at it, it's like things just got digitized. The experience yeah. hasn't been transformed. So what does it take to get to that? Well, actually, I would disagree. Okay. I think that we are, some parts of the tech is really transforming the experience. But let's back up a second, because I also was in healthcare for a couple of decades before it was tech. <laughs> and I, I wrestled with quality of care and cost of care before and then, of course, during this period. And I really want to start out by saying we are not so good, whether we're tech or not, I mean, if we look at the, in, the inability of most people to pay for care, mm -hmm. the out-of-pocket costs, the lives threatened and ruined for, through costs, lack of access, everything, we haven't cured those yet. We have the potential to do it through tech. It's a really important enabler. But we don't have the cultural and social and political will consolidated yet to do this. So I think... You know, JPM has more women, but it's still pretty goddamn white. It is. And the industry is. And mm -hmm. at Consejo Sano, for example, 80% of the people developing the products are first-generation immigrants. And 25% of our workforce have been on Medicaid. There aren't a lot of other companies right. that bring that kind of depth of understanding and knowledge. 
I think that's part of why I'm excited about being with a medicist is that you have to actually know what people are living through because we are not meeting that need yet. I see huge potential in digital. I really do think it's a absolutely necessary part of the solution, but we're, we've got a long way to go. On that, on that other side, on this, the side of this being more of a social and political issue, what, what can we do as like the, you know, the technologists involved here? I mean, what can we do? Yeah, a couple of things. First of all, don't assume that you're going to start with a white commercial and mostly male. Although I think, to be fair, most people assume women are a big part of the hair, healthcare purchasing <laughs> yeah, really, public. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> but don't assume that that's where you ought to start. Think in terms of building from the beginning for being able to meet the needs of what this society really is, what our country really is today. Yeah or at least being able to migrate into that very quickly. And some of the people listening know that a group of us recently founded a nonprofit organization called Health Tech for Medicaid. And you can find it online at healthtechformedicaid.org. Okay. And we bring together the venture-backed companies that are addressing Medicaid or would like to. And so I, there's really a force now to try and bring about that change and focus. Talk more about that. I'm curious to hear, you know, when you're talking about the venture community, especially in a place like San Francisco, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's like there definitely is a certain type of person living a certain type of lifestyle. So what has been the experience for, for some of those venture capitalists as they've been getting involved and in learning more about the Medicaid population and how to support that? Well, the first thing is, is that we've actually found that when you scratch a venture capitalist, some proportion of them actually do understand well, about this. They just, <laughs> yeah, there are people out there that really care about these mm -hmm. issues and would like to do something helpful. And so part of it is connecting the dots of how could this actually be a real business? How could it be profitable? And then we look at the experience of, like this morning, we had our program at JPM, and we had 250 investors and awesome. developers there. And two of the people speaking about women's health have been selling to Medicaid, women's you know, maternal infant yeah. um, programs, very successfully making serious money. So part of this is just making sure that the investors understand and the developers understand that if you can really solve the problems for people, you can actually do well and do good. I think that's phenomenal. And I think, you know, as you just said, I think as long as the business case aligns with that, I mean, that's kind of, you know, mm -hmm. unfortunately, the language that we're used to speaking, right? Yeah. yeah. But it's, I, don't, I don't shrink from that. No, I think that's great. I, I think even, you know, the Catholic Church, the nuns who were running hospitals when I was commissioner of health in New Jersey, used to say, no margin, no mission. It's true. You know, yeah. nobody launches even a nonprofit effort planning to go out of existence. Right, right, so, right. You know. No, absolutely. I think that that's smart. And I think I wanted to ask you, too, you know, in, in terms of, you know, making sure that, you know, for the innovators out there who might be watching as they're developing their solution, how, they, how can they be more mindful? Do you have any tips that you'd like to offer? Well, it, you know, the, the sort of standard thing of user-centered design you know, go meet the people you're serving. Right. I think most companies now do that, do that to a certain extent. But if your happen chance is to choose a bunch of middle class white people as your test case, you're yes. going to design for that. So make sure that you hire people from a real diverse background, that you actually design for people of a diverse background. And it, it will pay off in many, many ways. What do you think that the the digital health or the health tech world these days is doing well? If you were to say, like, you know what, mm -hmm. we've had our struggles and there are certain yeah. things we're not doing doing that great yet. Right. We're getting smarter at it. But what are we winning at? Like, are we doing a good job of integrating tech these days? Have we kind of come to a, <laughs> come to a consensus <laughs> about, like, okay, this is how you have yeah. to do this. We know it's not going to be fat. Like, right, what, what right. have we done well from your opinion? Well, I'm going to just set the EHR discussion to the yeah, side. Yeah, let's just put that. I know. As soon as I said that, you, Molly. I was I like, know. let's just not Please. talk EHR. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. But <laughs> I think I think the two things that they, that is being done, two things that are being done very very well. First thing is people are re really getting to the point where they know they have to show results. It's no longer that wouldn't this be great if we could do this. And you see this in the presentations. You see it in the pitches. People realize that very soon you have to actually show results that make a difference. And in Avia, where I'm working now. 
our, a big part of our value is going out to the systems that have adopted something and finding out what they really think about that. Did it really work for them? Mm. So it's not just the vendor's claims, but right. it's also the experience. The other thing that's really exciting is that people are getting more cynical. And <laughs> Which is so exciting. <laughs> yeah. But in this case, it's really good because for a long time, if you wanted to do something sort of unusual, revolutionary, adventurous, the developers and the young companies would be a little afraid if a doctor said, oh, you shouldn't do it that way. Yeah. But now they know that a lot of times what the consumers want is something the doctor hasn't ever imagined. Yeah. And so people are willing to try things that are a little bit different in terms of challenging the accepted myth. Not everybody has to go physically to a doctor for primary care. Right. Primary care is very important, but I'm on the advisory board of 98.6. 95% of presenting primary care conditions can be managed with texting with a doctor. Yep. So it's, you know, yeah. it's really important to challenge the assumptions. How do you see, I mean, you're talking about that, and I'm thinking, you know, one of the biggest challenges in this space has been the entrance of non-healthcare healthcare companies. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. So weigh in for me on yeah. that. Do you think that that's a good thing to have that perspective from, like, the Walmarts yeah. and the Amazons of the world? What do you think? I 100% think it's good. Okay. Because I think that, sure, they're going to get it wrong, too. But tell me how many investors you know who got it right all the time yeah. or developers as innovators. So I don't fault them for that. A close friend of mine is very involved in the um, – Oh, I'm forgetting the name of, you know, J.P. Morgan and... Oh, Haven. Uh, yeah, Haven, thank you, of Haven. And they were not doing their marketing research. No, clearly. <laughs> yeah, it's no, like they yeah. announced a tool Gawanda, and that's it. We haven't heard a thing from right, them since. Right. <laughs> but I think that that kind of thing is great, even if it, it you know, doesn't really come to t fruition. Just the image of a group oh out gosh, there right? asking those emperor's new clothes kind of questions mm -hmm. is totally worthwhile. So I tend to think, that we can only do well. And I think if you go under the covers at some of the collaborations between Google and large health systems like Ascension, they've made mistakes, but they really are on the track of something that can be very, very good. Do you think we'll get to a point where the payment model will shift? To, to support all of this, because that's one of the things. I have a health plan background, and so I'm a nerd when it comes to this <laughs> stuff. I always, and that's always like, you know, literally it's where the yeah. buck stops. Is, right. You know, are we going to figure out a better way to provide care and make it so that people are not rendered bankrupt if something happens yeah. to them? So do you think that that's kind of, I mean, you look at the different ways that technology has taken um, taken a role in healthcare mm -hmm. and in transforming the experience of it, yeah. but the payment model still kind of remains the payment model. Right. Do you think we'll ever be able to change that? Oh, I think we are seeing that start to happen in a big way. Employers, as usual, are really leading yeah. the way on that. And I, I mean, Churchill said, we'll try everything else except the thing that works <laughs> until we finally do the right thing. And so I don't know how long it's going to take us, 5, 10, 15 years, but um, I get my care from a system where the providers and the insurance function is totally integrated. I believe that the best quality care is when everybody knows they're better off if they keep you healthy. Yeah. And it's only because of digital that we could have the transparency to find out when a health plan might actually be trying to, or a provider group, short you of the care that you need. You've got to have the ability to look because there's no human incentive that doesn't go wrong. Right. <laughs> you know? So you well need said. to have that capability. But anyway. All right, Molly, last thing for you. What are you most excited about heading into 2020? <laughs> New decade. You know, uh, I mean, we're here. So I keep hearing it's the year of digital health. Then yeah. I hear it's not. But then I hear again that it is. I mean, so there's definitely, yeah. you know, I, things, I think spirits are, are kind of high right now. What do you think? What are you most looking forward to this year? What I'm really looking forward to is seeing as we've already seen in 2019, a few steps, more and more health plans announce products that are cheaper, where the premium is going down if the member, the patient, is willing to use digital. Mm. And we've already seen a couple of yep. those. Mm -hmm. And I think that will be the flywheel when we can start saying to the consumer, yep. it's going to be cheaper and it's going to be better and more convenient for you and the outcomes are good.
So awesome. Oh my God. I hope so too. I hope so too. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much. I'm Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. Thanks so much for joining us.